So Leah, what is The Trouble With Lucy all about? Okay, it's a classic um, story that city girl moves to the country, Lucy's sick, so she goes to the country to stay with her parents and the first person she meets is Tom, gorgeous farmer, and they're attracted physically straight away, but um, she looks at him and thinks, ooh, farmer, and he looks at her and thinks, ooh, city chick. So um, you have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> and what inspired you to write the plot? Of the trouble with Lucy? Um, I'm not quite sure what inspired me. I've, I've always liked the idea of opposites attract, I guess, and um, and I like the idea of a small town and that just seemed to work that you've got, you know, the, the complete opposites of city girl moving into the country town and country towns just offer so much kind of rich backgrounds, I guess. And are you a city girl or a country girl yourself? I'm a uh, oh, sorry, I'm a city girl, but I did spend quite a bit of time in the country because my grandparents retired there when we were quite young. So we probably spent a lot of our school holidays and weekends um, in Trentham, which is a small country town in Victoria. So your hero, Tom McGregor, is a vet. Where did you begin with writing about a vet? Do you know much about them or? Uh, no, I don't know a lot about vets, but I, I do now, obviously, after um, doing a bit of research for the book. But uh, no, I think it was just Lucy needed a hero who, who had to be more than a farmer for some, you know, for some reason, because she had this thing about farmers. So the vet just seemed like the next best thing, you know, doc a science doctor. So um, yeah, that's where that came from. So and Tom delivers a calf during the course of the book. How technically correct is your description of the birth? Well, I hope it's pretty close. Uh, I did quite a bit of research and checked out, you know, d different different sites and different responses. So I think that I kind of pared it down to the right response. But of course, I'm sure that someone, some vet somewhere will say, no, that's not right. But hopefully it's, it's close enough. Uh -huh. yeah. You didn't actually witness anything like that as a kid growing up in the country? No, I saw a lot of, a lot of chooks getting their head chopped off and uh, watching them run around. But that's about as close as to any gory stuff I got. <laughs> um, so Tom's a pretty gorgeous hero and I wanted to know is he your idea of a perfect man or do you personally, does, uh, what is your idea of a perfect man? Uh, I would have to say my partner Greg just in case he watches this. Um, but no Tom's pretty cool, Tom's kind of vaguely based on Hugh Jackman even though I'm not a big fan of Hugh Jackman, he's a bit cabaret so kind of you take the cabaret out of Hugh Jackman and put him into you know, when, how he was in Australia. So just kind of a laid back, cool country guy. He's really comfortable in his own skin and doesn't mind getting his hands dirty and, you know, walks well, looks good, all that. <laughs> and personally, your idea of a perfect man then, if it's... Uh, well, it probably probably be Greg. Uh, you know, he looks good, he, you know, he's a good friend. We get on really well. And I just think, you know, guys who, who are friendly and, you know, and charming and interesting and funny and, um, yeah, not good in a pair of jeans. It's important. <laughs> How long you've been together? Uh, about 17 years, I think. How'd you meet? We both worked in the same advertising agency. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that leads me to ask uh, your job outside writing. What is it you do day to day? I work in advertising. But as I've said, don't hold that against me. So I basically write ads. So I'm a copywriter and Greg's a designer. So we worked as a team, which is quite sweet. So um, yeah, I. I write ads whether it's TV or radio so it's always been writing advertising is actually really good practice for writing books because you have to be really succinct and tight and you can't you know go on and on and on like what, I am now. What's the strangest product you've ever had to write an ad for? Uh, oh, possibly dog food I guess you know trying to make it sound gourmet which I've had to do. <laughs> Bit of a challenge. You didn't have to sample it. No, no. <laughs> I had to smell it. Um, mm. Lucy's pretty obsessed. She's a city gal and she's really into fashion. Um, always inappropriately dressed throughout the entire book. Um, are you equally into fashion or? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you know, obviously for work we all have to dress smart and I actually do work on a fashion account. But I, you know, daily I'm amazed at you know, I'll be writing about a pair of shoes uh, that are worth $1,500 and it just baffles me that, well it doesn't baffle me, I understand some people have the money and the, and the passion and the desire to buy those pair of shoes but I just look at, look at it and think I'd rather spend the $1,500 elsewhere so no, I'm not, I'm, not, um, I'm not a fashion freak like Lucy at all. Do you wear high heels like Lucy does or big platforms like Lucy does? Uh, no, when I do I look a little awkward but um, no, I think my favourite pair of shoes are my runners or my pink gum boots, which I bring out for fancy occasions. 
Um, your writing background, tell us, has it always been a desire of yours to be an author? Yeah, uh, forever. I think I started my first book when I was about 12 and I can, rem I can still remember being at, in grade six at school and it was um, Jimmy Carter was the president and there was this, un it was all very Anna Blight and very Adventure 5 and there was lots of stuff going on but I've been writing forever even while I've been writing in, in advertising I've written you know countless children's books and I dabbled in romance about 20 years ago and um, I've written, I've recently just written a trilogy for teenagers because I have teenage daughters now and I realised there was a bit of a gap for them so I thought oh, what could I write that they would like so you know, children's books, picture books, I've d yeah, just been writing forever, really. But this is the first time I've been published, so I'm very excited. Ah, how did you feel when you heard the news that Destiny was going to publish your book? Um, I was yeah, crazy. It was, um, I was excited, I was elated, I was kind of relieved, thinking, oh, thank goodness, after, you know, writing for the last 30 years or so. Uh, and nervous, because suddenly it's out there, which means that anybody can read it, so you're open for you know, for people liking it, but criticism. So all that was going through my mind. But I was in a lift when Sarah rang and, you know, all the family was around me. So I sh sort of shuffled them, all, shuffled them all away so I could actually concentrate. But it was pretty amazing, yeah. Um, and why the romance genre? Why have you, I think you mentioned you've written romance a long time ago. Clearly you've come back to it. Why is that? I think I just really enjoy it. And I think also, um, Back when I read a few, you know, we always used to sit around when we were camping and read lots of Mills and Boone out loud. We'd always had a bit of a giggle. We thought it was great. And so I always had this in my mind. It was always about, you know, sweaty nurses and doctors in the operating table and whatnot. But, um, you know, as I've got older and I've, I just really appreciate comedy writing and romantic comedy I really love. And it dawned on me that this is romance writing, you know. So, um, and I, I just like the idea that it's feel good, it's fun. You know, I enjoyed writing it. I was having a giggle to myself sometimes when I was writing stuff. and. And you get the ultimate happy ending, which I think, you know, there's enough bad stuff going on without needing to read about it, you know. So it's nice knowing that you're going to read a book, you're going to go through all the twists and turns and you're going to come out, you know, feeling pretty happy, which I think is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, your name is Leah, but you write under the initials LJ Young. And why did you choose to do that? Um, well, mainly because, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan. Of, you know, I like many writers, but I realise that I'm a big fan of many writers who use initials, you know, A.A. A. Milne, J.K. Rowling, J.D. Salinger. And I just thought it'd be a bit of fun and you know, it might, be, might bring me a bit of luck, I guess. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your life outside writing. Um, I'm pretty busy. I have three daughters, uh, 7, 12 and 14. So I'm busy with the 7-year-old doing dress-ups and the 12 and 14-year-old, you know, off the phone, get dressed, pull that down, all that sort of stuff. So, and, um, you know, just gardening, reading, going to movies hanging out, playing netball, I coach the netball, so working, yeah, just busy, yeah. Uh, you're, you mentioned you love romantic comedies, have you got a favourite one? Yeah, I think my favourite, I mean, I have a lot, but, you know, and I have quite a few, but my top three, I would say, would be um, Tootsie, I just love it, I watch it every year and every year, even though the fashion's getting, <laughs> not that I'm a fashion girl, but even though the fashion and the hairstyles are getting a little dated, I just love it, I think it's wonderful. Um, and Emily, I'm a big fan of Emily. I just think it's just quirky and cute. And probably my third, which would be hard, would be um, when Harry met Sally. You know, they're just they're just fun. And and I think with all of them, you know, there's going to be a happy ending. But it's just a really nice journey as you're watching them. They're funny and clever. What about your favourite romance author? Well, you know, I don't want to be obvious, but I'd have to say Jane Austen. I just think you know, she's just classic and she's clever and she's funny and she's intriguing and compelling and just you know, ahead of her time in so many ways. But I'd, so she, she would be my favourite of all time. But I also do like a lot of modern writers too. You know, I, I love Hel Helen Fielding, um, Marion Keyes, Sophie Kinsella. They've obviously all got a bit of a comedy bent to them, which is, which is the, the writing I enjoy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you read the newest, the latest Marion Keyes? No, because I've been busy reading Destiny Romance. I haven't had time. <laughs> so many wonderful books. Of course. <laughs> yeah, but no, I did see that it's come out. So that's next on my list. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Leah. That's great. Thank you.